I am pleased to be here today. My name is Dee Dee Pfister, Associate Vice President of Academic Professional Development, Online Learning and Transfer, along with my colleagues Tom Kemp, Executive Director of our Online Learning OLAT team, and George Kineski, Professor of English at the Western Campus. Today we're here to talk to you about our Learning Management System Review, fondly known as our LMS Review. So what we're going to review today is just give you a brief overview and offer an opportunity for everyone to get involved because this is truly an all-hands-on-deck project as part of our transformation plan. We're going to talk about why. We're going to give you background about previous LMS reviews and where we are today. We're going to talk about what, what vendors we're using, what is the LMS review process that we're embarking on, who, who are the faculty involved? Who are all the stakeholders involved? When? We're going to share the timeline. And then how? How are we going to support faculty and students in this process? So as Dr. Miller shared, we have many projects involved in our transformation plan. And this LMS review is a key project as part of our transformation plan. Really, we are aligned to goal number two, which is innovation, teaching, and learning to leverage people and technology to improve course delivery, enhance our virtual infrastructure, and improve support for students and faculty. Essentially, our overall goal as an OLAT team, we are building a cross-functional group that includes faculty, students, staff, administrators to be part of this process of researching, testing, selecting, and implementing a new system by summer of 2025. So this is truly a multi-year project, and I, I hope that you learn a little bit about how we're going about this process and why there is a long time frame involved. We are really hitting this very hard and in a really I think, a, a, a effective way. Oops, I apologize. All right, now I am going to introduce um, George Kineski. Now, a little bit about George, if you don't know George. George has been at the institution for 25 years. He is considered one of our pioneers of online learning here at Tri-C. So who better to have share a little bit about the history of the LMS review but George Kineski. Thank you, Dee Dee. Um, so in the early years of 1998, um, that's where we'll start, uh, we only had four online courses and we made each website in Microsoft front page by hand, you could say, because somebody had to go through there and click it. And a single component, like a discussion board, could take a half hour to build on the server. And uh, if you wanted a test or a quiz in the course, that had to be engineered by hand, programmed, in other words. Somebody had to program you know, in Perl or something. That's what we used at the time. So this clearly, that, that's what we were doing, but it was unsustainable web-based courses could not grow under those circumstances. So our first LMS review um, was kind of small scale and it was focused on just finding a solution. It was a technical review basically and it included two faculty members and two staff members. Um, Dr. Sam Sparrow, Metro Campus Mathematics, myself, James Gilmore of TSR, which has become ITS, and Rod Despenet of Distance Learning. Why us? Well, we were all techies. I mean, uh, Dr. Sparrow had a course introduction to the internet he did on smart TV, and I was teaching in a, a similar system before we got onto the web. So that was our focus, was the technical. Um, in 2014, um, a lot changed. Um, we had a total of 831 courses that we were supporting uh, in Blackboard at the time. And basically the motivation, I think, for this review was that we hadn't done one and we should do one. You know, you review textbooks every once in a while, well, we should consider what's out there in terms of the LMSs. 
This also saw a much greater participation across the college. It wasn't just four people, it was everybody. Um, and basically we had teams of faculty, staff, and students. Uh, we focused a lot on functionality, making sure things would work. Uh, browser compatibility was a major concern. Uh, we had sandboxes, uh, sandbox sites in each LMS, pretend courses. And we were each other's pretend students to try and break things, basically. That's how I looked at it, you know, see if we can make a break. And we recorded all of our observations with detailed rubrics and reached our decision. Um, today, things are a little bit different. We have 8,407 courses supported, so uh, incredible growth. Uh, now, because we have uh, wonderful support from the college, resources, and uh, other support, we have 24 faculty who will be LMS reviewers conducting a full pedagogical review, which means they're going to teach in each of the LMSs real live courses with real live students and um, record their observations of how well they work. So this is going to take us six semesters. The first, we will train in each LMS. The next semester, we will teach in that LMS. And we're going through three. Um, I'm going to have uh, Tom Kemp speak about the best practices that we are following and building in this process. Thank you, George. Uh, as George said, we're modeling our 2022 LMS review after the pedagogical best practices of teaching online. And uh, OLAT went and looked at what other institutions who have successfully uh, implemented an LMS review and what they had done over the last couple years. And we're in some really, we have a, a lot of uh, information, a lot of other institutions to draw from that have been successful in that uh, process. We looked at Northern Arizona University, NC Chapel Hill, uh, Tennessee Board of Regents as an example, and uh, we took the best out of all of the reviews that they had done along with several others and have implemented them as part of ours. The other thing uh, we've been doing is we've been talking a little bit about our process that you're learning about today with uh, other institutions in the state of Ohio. And in particular, we, uh, Dr. Kyle Mumberg, who is my counterpart in OLAT, and I just recently did a 45-minute uh, presentation to the Ohio Blackboard Users Group. And uh, that presentation was incredibly and enthusiastically received, our plan of how our review is going to be conducted. Um, one of the other outcomes of that uh, meeting was that our counterparts at other colleges wished to thank our senior leadership for putting all of the resources that they have put in place for us to successfully conduct the review with our faculty. And I thought that was something I just wanted to share with all of you. So thank you, Dr. Johnson, Dr. Miller, and Dr. English, and everybody else involved. And because of those conversations within the state, we're now aware of six to seven other colleges and universities that are about to go through an LMS review similar to what we're doing, and they're watching us very carefully within the next 18 months. So you may wonder why so many institutions are doing an LMS review right now. Um, well, recently Blackboard was acquired by a company called Anthology. And as with most mergers, we anticipate consolidation. Although Blackboard has not announced a formal date to end support for Blackboard Learn Original, that's the version we're using, by the way, Blackboard Learn. Um, it is clear, though, that Blackboard's resources, updates, new development are not being directed towards Learn, but towards the newer version, Blackboard Ultra. So, Tri-C realizes the need to be proactive to conduct the LMS review now. Well, we have the chance, so it's our decision, and we make the best decision for our students. We will spend two semesters on each LMS, uh, one for training, the next for teaching and evaluation, as I've said, for a total of six semesters.
So who is involved? Like I said, this is an all hands on deck project. And as you can see, we have our guiding leadership team, Dr. Lindsay English, Standish Stewart, myself, Tom Kemp, Kyle Malmberg, Sean Herring, and Matthias Pratt. Additionally, you can see all of these various stakeholder groups represented. That includes OLAT, ITS, uh, our faculty reviewers, as George mentioned, we have 24 faculty reviewers. We have our OLAT ambassadors, our DS, um, DLS, Distance Learning Steering Committee, and um, that is our guiding group, students, CBE Task Force, CLOA, faculty development, adjunct faculty, CLE, our WESED group, our level two and three help desk support, our academic deans, and of course, our vendors. Um, of those folks, you can see represented in teal those that represent the um, focus on pedagogy because as George said, we've moved from an exploratory to a functional to a pedagogical review where our faculty will truly be teaching in these systems starting this summer. Um, I want to mention how this will work. Uh, we have worked all spring to train up our faculty LMS reviewers so they are prepared to teach this summer. Now we will be reaching out to all of the groups that are represented around the circle for your input. So more to come as we progress throughout the summer and everyone will have an opportunity if you are interested to get a sandbox site and work within each one of the LMSs. I'll now turn it over to George, who will share a little bit about our faculty review team. So who are the LMS reviewers? Well, all campuses are represented, as you can see. The faculty and disciplines are diverse, ranging from humanities and health sciences and STEM. Um, specific disciplines I can name include anthropology, art, biology, communications, English, math, nursing, psychology, Spanish, and others. Additionally, we encourage faculty who are not LMS reviewers to get involved. In other words, if you don't see your name up there, we still want you to be involved, whether you're full-time or adjunct. Any faculty can request a sandbox site while LMS faculty reviewers teach in that LMS. So, Faculty sandboxers will be able to try out each LMS. They will also get a standard form for reporting their findings. Um, likes, dislikes, must-haves, deal breakers, and all of that feedback will become part of the decision process going forward. In addition, faculty sandboxers will have full technical support from college staff. That's our people, not some outside help desk and you will also have access to training materials as you explore your sandbox site. So to reiterate, faculty can request a sandbox site only during the same semester that LMS reviewers are teaching in it. Why? Well, the infrastructure and support needs to be in, fully in place for each LMS, so we have to you know, go one at a time. Um, in other words, this means no line jumping. You might want to go look at Canvas right away. No, we're going ultra D2L, then Canvas has to be in that order, sorry. Um, so this means if you want to get involved with a sandbox site, you can do so starting this summer uh, with Blackboard Ultra. And then in spring of 2023, uh, you can have a D2L Brightspace uh, Desire to Learn site. And then finally, Canvas sites would be available in fall of 2023. So as George mentioned, uh, we've been working on putting this together for a little while and setting up the training. So I just wanted to very briefly share with you the calendar that we have put together. We actually, within OLAT, internally started working on the LMS re review, researching, finding the other institutions that have been successful at this process uh, back in uh, spring of 2021. Then we started talking with all three vendors, letting them know what our timeline was gonna be, what resources we were going to need from them, 
And we made that very clear to uh, Blackboard, D2L, and Canvas. Then we started in earnest uh, engineering and talking with all of the third-party vendors that we utilize. We have 44 different engineered uh, vendors that are now make up part of our LMS review. Uh, and we talked with all of them and said, can you help us support us teach in an alternative LMS while we're still teaching using Blackboard Learn? And uh, they were all resoundingly positive about that process. So as we got out of 2021, we started training faculty on how to use the new Ultra environment in spring of 2022. Here in about two weeks, we're going to launch and actually teach using Ultra, which is fantastic, in a production environment, just as it would be as if we were actually using it for real for all 8,000 courses. And then in fall, we actually switch gears and we start training those 24 faculty on how to use D2L. Then in spring, or yes, in spring of 2023, we uh, teach using D2L then switch gears one more time and train those 24 faculty on how to teach using Canvas. And then in the fall of 2023, we teach using Canvas. Then in the spring of 2024, we actually do the recommendation based on the evaluations that we've gotten from all the stakeholders, all of our students that have participated, and our faculty. That recommendation will go to the Distance Learning Steering Committee and then to the Provost, the AAUP, and Faculty Senate for review and final decision. Once a decision is made, then we start to train faculty in earnest. We start to do the integrations uh, that are required within Banner and some of the other, uh, well, pretty much all of the other LMS uh, third-party uh, tools that we use. And then hopefully we start to migrate content in, and start teaching in the fall of 2024 with hopefully being completely done and uh, completed by fall of 2025. So we have quite a bit of time built into the process to move content over. And once we know who the vendor is, we'll be able to talk a little bit more about that in time. Oh, and that's me. Okay, and how? <laughs> so how are we going to do this? Um, we have faculty support in place, and we're obviously training faculty on how to use Blackboard Ultra, D2L, Canvas as well. And we are uh, having outside people that are familiar with those training, uh, with those different platforms come in and train our faculty and also train the OLAT staff. We're going to have how-to videos that are on time, on demand for our faculty on our website. Uh, as I said, or as George mentioned, we have the OLAT team is going to have, uh, is, is, is set up to have uh, kind of team leaders with the faculty to help them as they navigate and teach using all three LMSs. We're going to have help desk support that includes a live chat function for faculty and students, which I'll get to here in a moment, uh, that they can go in and ask a question uh, live using a live chat. Uh, we also will have the LMS review uh, email address for students that need to email us at 2 o'clock in the morning with a question or something like that, and faculty as well, along with the LMS, uh, kind of LMS pop-in and discussion sessions that we're setting up to meet with the faculty and our designers, and then the LMS uh, review webpage, which I'll share with you here in just a moment. From a student support perspective, um, very much the same thing. We're going to be communicating out to students uh, about the LMS review process that are affected uh, over the summer. There are right now 368 students that we have identified and are getting uh, messages and about support from us. Uh, within those uh, different uh, options, we're showing students where to find uh, how-to videos on time on demand for them. We have a web form where they can ask questions. We have the live chat set up so that they can reach out to us uh, pretty much uh, during the day and evening hours. And then um, uh, an email address which they can call us and ask us questions, and then the LMS Review website as well. And anybody can go and visit the LMS Review website. Uh, this is it. You can see we have all three vendors on the side and uh, the uh, LMS Review uh, tabs on the side that you can see where the latest updates are. We try to update it about every two weeks.
All right, so that is our learning management system review process, some details. We are just so excited, of course, to celebrate the past that George shared, but to really embrace our future with this learning management system review. Uh, we feel it's very thorough, and if you have questions, we have our emails available for you. You can visit our website, and we encourage everyone to get involved. Again, this is an all-hands-on-deck process. And we also have visited many um, internal departments sharing about the LMS review. We're happy to continue the road show. So you just give us a shout out and we will come visit your team and share more about the LMS review. Ultimately, at the end of the process, um, once faculty reviewers have gone through all three LMSs and we've reached out to all of our stakeholders, the uh, responsibility for sort of ferreting out all of the details and evaluations is from our distance learning steering committee. And we have a nice representation of individuals on that committee as well. So we look forward to working with all of you on the learning management system review.